Did you know? The original Fallout was heavily based on a similar post-apocalyptic role-playing game called Wasteland, and could even be called its successor. After the release of Wasteland, the game's developer Interplay Entertainment started working on a game called Meantime. Meantime was cancelled as it was set to release in a time where games with 16-color EGA visuals were being outshined by games that used 256-color VGA graphics like Ultima 7 The Black Gate. Electronic Arts, who owned the rights to Wasteland, tried making a sequel without Interplay's involvement. The game was called Fountain of Dreams. It was smaller than Wasteland, unforgiving from the get-go, and was met with poor reception from fans and critics. Interplay went in their own direction, salvaging what they could of Wasteland, and nine years after Wasteland's release, Fallout hit store shelves. Fallout even had Wasteland in one of its early working titles, GURPS Wasteland. GURPS meaning Generic Universal Role-Playing System, a tabletop role-playing game system that was designed to work in any setting. Even though Fallout is essentially a successor to Wasteland, some other settings were considered early in development, including a time travel theme that had aliens and dinosaurs. Although the time travel with aliens and dinosaurs setting was never used, the ideas made it into the final game in the form of hidden easter eggs. Wandering through the Wasteland, you can find the footprint of the dinosaur-inspired creation, Godzilla. And it's even possible to stumble upon the TARDIS from Doctor Who in a random encounter. If you get too close, the TARDIS simply disappears. The game also, as you might expect, has multiple nods to the 1979 movie Mad Max. Pulp Fiction, Monty Python, South Park, The Simpsons, and many more franchises were referenced during the game. These easter eggs and references became a trait of the series and became popular with the players. Fallout tackled some mature subject matter like drug abuse and the killing of children, and as a result, the series has been censored around the world. Originally, the game had child non-playable characters wandering the wastelands. All children were removed from the gameplay in the UK and German versions of Fallout 1 and 2 to avoid controversy. This meant the game's child killer reputation was inaccessible in those regions, along with the encounter of the bounty hunter Chris Avalone in Fallout 1, who had a special hatred of child killers. For Fallout 2, the image representing the child killer perk was changed during development. The original image surfaced in 2010 when the artist who worked on Fallout 2, Brian Menze, posted it to his online portfolio. Menze said, This image was unused and the only Vault Boy image to ever be cut from Fallout 2. I'm sure you could figure out why. I remember when I got the request to do a perk illustration for Child Killer, and there was no way to keep it from being offensive. I mean, really, how do you make an illustration of Child Killer and keep it from being offensive? Anyway, for some reason, I thought this was the least offensive way to do it. I have no idea what I was thinking. Even the designer who requested it realized it was a bad idea, so we nixed it. Looking back on it now, I can't believe I drew this. There are two unused Vault Boy images still in Fallout 2's game data. One of them is for an unused reputation called Virgin of the Waste and has text attached to it that reads, You really need to get out more. Your sexual exploits have been, well, two-dimensional. The second image is for an alcoholism perk that has no programming attached to it. Addiction has been a reoccurring issue in the Fallout series. In Fallout 1 and 2, it's possible to become addicted to the intravenous radiation removal solution, Radaway. In the German version of the games, all addiction images were replaced. The UK releases of the games were also censored, with some words changed to avoid drug references, such as the word drug being changed to chem, and addiction being changed to craving. The term chem later became the standard in the series, and Radaway addiction was removed altogether in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. In the recent 3D Fallout games, Med X, an item that increases defense, was originally going to be called Morphine. The Australian Classification Board made it illegal to sell Fallout 3 in Australia because of the original reference to Morphine, so the game was changed to remove all drug references. Morphine was changed to MedX, and it was decided to keep the change for all regions. However, there's still evidence of this in the game itself. MedX's editor ID is still Morphine. The German version of Fallout 1 had blood and violent critical death animations censored, and the German version of Fallout 2 had multiple violence level options removed. The game's maximum blood and normal settings were removed, and the minimal setting became the German normal setting. The series has also been censored in Japan. There's a weapon mod in Fallout New Vegas called the Fat Man Little Boy Kit, which is based on Fallout 3's Fat Man Tactical Nuke Launcher. Their names reference two atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan during the end of World War II, nicknamed Fat Man and Little Boy. In the Japanese versions of the games, the name Fat Man was renamed to Nuka Launcher, even though the Little Boy Kit kept its name. The change was made to avoid offending Japanese players, though Japanese gamers generally didn't approve of the change, viewing it as unwanted censorship. There's one hidden secret surrounding the Fat Man. When you fire it, it throws a mini nuke ahead of you at your enemy, and when you reload it, you hear a bell making a ding sound. The bell heard is actually the lunchroom bell of the game's development team at Bethesda. If you're interested in trying Fallout 1 or 2 for the first time or replaying them, you can pick them up at GOG.com. GOG have tons of classic games like System Shock 2, Deus Ex, and Fallout, all DRM-free and available for PC and Mac. Be sure to check them out in the link below.
GOG.com have also given us a ton of games to give out to the fans of Digino Gaming on Facebook and Twitter next month, so be sure you're following us to get some free games. But hey, it doesn't have to end right now, why don't you go ahead and click that annotation that'll take you to one of my videos, the top 10 best swords in video games.